Chinese. Obviously, you'd want it to be a United States only and to try to beat the, the Chinese. Well, uh, first of all, NASA is funded by American tax dollars. So it seems to me as though, it need, you know, the tax dollars need to go to, to American companies. So, you know, just like with the current commercial programs. Um, China is, has explicitly stated that it, they want to go ahead and put people on the moon. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, that's great. Uh, I just want to make sure that those lunar resources are available for, for commercial uh, development. And so that's why I think um, we need to hurry up and, and get this lunar cost program going because I think uh, we need to make sure that, like I say, it's, it's available for commercial development in the long run so that everybody uh, benefits from these services and products. Well, uh, talking more about the in the long run then, um, with these sort of outposts, um, obviously you were talking about how eventually they would need humans to, to be on site to be able to perform certain repairs. Right. Would that be the end game to just have these small mining facilities or would they would want to try to expand into full-blown colonies? Oh, it's not the end, it's just the beginning. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, if, if, you, if you have basic life support that you're producing right on site, uh, and you've got, you're basically taking radiation off the table because you, you have people living under, under cover. Um, mm, basically, this, this is the first permanent sort of planetary surface um, settlement. Uh, I mean, it starts as a base, as a functional base, but it would be manned continuously forever. I think it, was, it sort of it could be your Jamestown uh, of, of a new world, you know? So, um, and to be perfectly honest, I mean, uh, extracting metals uh, and, and you can get uh, ceramics and you can get glass. Um, if you sort of go, you know, you just deliver a box uh, of 500 years worth of computer chips and cameras and radio equipment, things like that, you're really looking at something that could uh, be fairly independent of the Earth. Uh, and it would just be an interesting question as to whether we could take that last step of, of really being able to use sort of 1940s type technology to, to be able to uh, create uh, equipment that could provide everything, could, you know, uh, uh, provide the equipment necessary to be able to provide for the needs of the colony on an, on an ongoing basis. Um, but I'll, I'll leave that to the science fiction writers. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a physician then, let me ask you this. Um, would people that would be uh, going to the, uh, the initial base and eventually colony, would they only be able to stay there for a certain amount of time before having to return? Or if they were to stay their entire lives, and that leads into possible future generations that are born and live on the moon, yeah. what sort of genetic and even physical changes would occur? And would lunar humans be unable to return to Earth after a few generations? <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't think, uh, I don't think we're going to change genetically that quickly, uh, especially when, uh, I mean, um, selection is not by, you know, claw, tooth and claw, you know, for, for humans. So I, I'm not expecting us to become a new species after 10 generations. Uh, it wouldn't be anywhere near uh, that fast. Um, but th you're, you're bringing up some very important and interesting questions that are not short-term questions, but they are. I mean, if, if we have people living for potentially years on the moon, then that is going to become a, a question, a real question. And in fact, as you have husbands and wives going to this lunar base, you got to really start doing your, your animal studies to take a look at, well, what if a pregnancy happens, you know, and then what? I've thought about this, um, and in, in the first place, in the short term, how long can people stay on the moon? We've taken radiation uh, off the table, but there is the one six gravity, and uh, from what I understand, um, although I'm not aerospace medicine, but from, from what I've heard and read, it seems to me as though um, we're probably gonna have significant, um, significant issues, health issues uh, in, in, in the one six gravity. I think that we're, we're going to, uh, we're going to need to probably have some uh, centrifuges, uh, some sort of solution there. Um, and exactly, do we need to get 0.6 or 0.7 Gs? And for what, just sleeping time or all the time, you know, these are issues. In terms of like pregnancy, uh, I think that, um, uh, let me just say about centrifuges, I've sort of thought about what could be done and I think there are solutions there. Um, but in terms of, um, of pregnancy, my feeling is 
in the early years, the moment a woman gets pregnant on the moon, she's shipped back to Earth because we do not want a fetus developing in, in hypogravity. I, I think that's just terribly unethical uh, to, to the life of, of, of the child. Um, but uh, fairly early on, I think we need to be doing animal studies of like having a, a, a tetherball sort of system where you're, you're, you, know, you put an, uh, a dog or something in a cage and you're spinning, spinning it around in a tether so you can go ahead and produce up to one G of gravity. Uh, and, so, and so you uh, do a lot of different sort of studies at different levels to find out what is the, the outcome uh, for a fetal development at, at different gravity. So you can sort of begin to use animal, animal models to figure out what do human needs need in order to have a healthy baby. Uh, and when we can figure that out, then the restrictions on pregnancy and shipping back can be lifted, uh, and I think we can safely have children. Um, but that's going to take uh, several years to be able to get those answers, and I, I wouldn't want to rush that. One more health question for you. Um, do you think that um, humans that are born or spend a lot of time on the moon or even yeah. Mars will eventually have their circadian rhythms thrown off, and will that affect their aging? Good. I haven't really thought about that. That's a really good question. Um, what I would say is on the moon, you, you'd, we would have to have, because, you know, a lunar day is, you know, is about 15 days of sunlight and 15 days of night. So forget the circadian. It's way off, you know. Um, so my feeling is people live indoors and you set up the lighting system to, to mimic Earth. So I think that's probably what, what you need to do almost indefinitely on, on the moon. Uh, in terms of places like Mars, where it's, it's slightly off, it's like I think a half hour off from an, a, an Earth day, um, you probably, I don't know, you probably have a bit of constant jet lag. Not too bad, but you know, constant. And um, probably people would just learn to live with it. 